Hello and welcome. My name is James Michael Shaw, Jr. I am an attorney in private practice, and I'm also a volunteer attorney with the ACLU of Florida. This webinar is a presentation from the Greater Tampa Chapter of the ACLU of Florida, uh, for which I am the chair of the chapter's legal panel. Um, we have got a rock star team of panelists here to whom I just can't wait to introduce you. And I'm going to give everybody uh, a minute for a brief to uh, know who you're uh, hearing from. And then I will explain our program for this evening. So let's start alphabetically uh, with Ms. Jackie Aziz. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining. My name is Jackie Aziz. I'm a staff attorney with the ACLU of Florida based out of our Tampa office. I've been with the ACLU of Florida for a little more than three years. And before I worked for the ACLU, I was an assistant public defender in Marion County, Florida, which is the Ocala area. Thanks for doing this to the Tampa chapter. And thank you for joining us. Um, next would be Mark. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Mark Paramanica. I'm a lawyer in private practice here in Tampa at Thomas and Cicero. Um, I practice mainly uh, media and communication law, so we represent a lot of uh, newspapers and television stations. First Amendment access work, you know, things of that nature. Um, before uh, coming to the firm, I was a staff attorney at the Report Committee for Freedom of the Press in Washington, D.C. for a few years. And um, I'm glad to be here today and uh, hopefully uh, answer any of your questions you have related to the First Amendment. Great. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Gretchen. Hello, everyone. My name is Gretchen Cothran. I am a criminal defense attorney here in Tampa, Florida. I am in private practice. Formerly, I served as a public defender in Tampa, Plant City, and Dade City. And I'm currently serving as the president of the Greater Tampa Chapter of the ACLU of Florida. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Representative-elect Rainer Goolsby. Hey, how are how is everyone? My name is Michelle Rayner. I am Rayner Goolsby. I am a uh, criminal defense attorney, civil rights attorney, and as James did share, I am representative elect for uh, State House District 70, and I'm really happy to be here. This is a very important um, topic, especially in the times that we're living in right now, and um, what uh, Black, Brown folks, and poor folks are facing. So I'm really grateful to be a part of this panel. Thank you. And uh, last but not least, Mr. Vasai. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to share this, uh, this Zoom webinar with, uh, with you guys. Um, you're all experts in your field. Uh, I, I really appreciate each and every one of you uh, for taking the time to do this, uh, especially you, James, and of course, uh, the Honorable Michelle Rayner Goolsby, who was just recently elected. Um, again, my name is Maj Vasai. Uh, I am in private practice here in Tampa, Florida. Uh, I practice criminal defense. I used to be a public defender when I first came out of law school. I briefly went into the corporate world for like two years and hated it and decided to come out and, and keep fighting the good fight for everyone. So it's going to be a pleasure. Great. Well, thank you. So this is our, uh, our all-star panel. Uh, they are going to be answering questions that you have about uh, what your rights are when interacting with the police. Here is the format. Uh, first off, we are being recorded, but you are not the, uh, the attendees, so you don't need to worry about um, uh, having your question preserved forever. Uh, we're going to begin with a video, uh, and uh, these esteemed panelists will then answer your questions. So while the video is playing, uh, please send your questions to the panelist in the chat function on Zoom at the bottom of your screen. And when the video is over, I will pose to our panelists as many questions as they have time uh, to answer. Anonymous questions are fine, but uh, please indicate that you don't want me to say who asked the question uh, when you uh, enter it into chat. Uh, if you don't want anyone else to be able to see your question, you can send it privately to just me and I will take your identity to my grave with me. Uh, but uh, while we're saving the video, we will not be saving the chat log, so your question will be gone forever at the, uh, at the end of this webinar. Please feel safe. Um, to ask whatever question you need to ask. A quick disclaimer, however, the information that we are about to give you is for general educational purposes only. It is not specifically tailored to your case. If you have a specific legal issue uh, about which you need advice, please contact an attorney in your area for assistance. Uh, with that said, uh, let's go ahead and play this video. This is not 
an ACLU produced video. It is produced by a group called Flex Your Rights and used with their permission for which we thank them. Uh, I've seen various Know Your Rights videos throughout my career. This one is by far the best one. It's not even close. Uh, now, if you've ever attended any kind of seminar or webinar or presentation at all, you know that 100% of the time, the video does not work. Uh, we're hoping to be the exception to that, but even so, um, uh, Zoom just is not made uh, for this particular uh, format. I just put a link in chat. Uh, that link, it is uh, bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash A-C-L-U, like the A-C-L-U, F-L, like Florida, and KYR, like know your rights. So, uh, or, or if, if worse comes to worst, you can jump onto YouTube and watch the video. It's called 10 Rules for Dealing with the Police. So I'm gonna try to broadcast it over Zoom. If, if you are unhappy with the quality and can't tolerate that, and you'd rather jump onto your web browser and watch it there and rejoin us, uh, that's fine with me. I, I just put the uh, link right there um, so you can watch it. So let's go to that video. And while the video is playing, uh, any questions that you have for the panelists, please put them in chat. We are also live broadcasting on Facebook in the Facebook group for the Greater Tampa chapter of the ACLU of Florida. And I will try to peek in there on the comments in case anyone is watching it in there and wants to leave a question for our panelists in the comments. I can't promise I'll get to it, but I'm gonna give it a try. Uh, speaking of that Facebook group, if you are not already a, a member of it, it is a great place to get uh, it, information about uh, what's going on with our local chapter. In fact, it is our, um, our official uh, method of communication. So I am now going to uh, attempt what I have been sweating about for a long time, and I am going to try to broadcast that video. Uh, again, if it doesn't work, go ahead and click the link in the chat and watch it on YouTube and then rejoin us. But, uh, but here goes nothing. Uh, here is 10 rules for dealing with the police uh, produced by Know Your Rights. Hey yo, my neighborhood is like a video set. Yeah. Cameras move slow when the street get wet. Action. Shake them up, roll money down, it's a bet. Uh -huh. G's on the set, throw it up right to left. I move like the city, so the streets come with me. Back pocket whiskey, keep me all pissy. Street thoughts got the feeling like a seesaw. Up, down, back up, I need to see more. The lean so mean, the gear all clean. Left arm up, steering the machine. Eyes in the rear view, gotta keep a clear view. When that money talk, the block gonna hear you. Ride with a rider, it'll be Every ass a movie, the script got dropped. Good evening, my friends. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Billy Murphy, and we're gonna talk about how to deal with the police. I've been a judge, but I'm best known as a criminal defense lawyer. I know how the law works, and I know that for many people, the law sometimes doesn't work. But I'm gonna show you how to make the law work for you. I see how the choices my clients make have a massive impact on the outcomes of their police encounters, even if, and especially if you've done nothing wrong. There are lots of good police out there doing what needs to be done. And I don't need to tell you that there are also few too many cops who don't respect the basic rights of innocent people. has been on the business end of a bad police encounter, then you're in the right place. Who's got a story they want to share with the class? What's your story? I got hassled by Highway Patrol the other day. 
Tell us about that. I was ready to explode. This was like the fourth time this year I've been pulled over for nothing. License and registration? Yeah, I know the drill, man. Excuse me? License? Registration. No need for the attitude there, bro. I'm looking out for your safety and everyone else's on this road. <laughs> Whatever, man. Okay, step out of the vehicle for me. Turn around and put your hands in the air. Turn around and put your hands in the air. Man. Walk forward. Walk forward. Hands on the hood. Hands on the hood me? of the car. Do it. Man, Spread your legs. What are you doing, man? Relax. God, dude. I didn't do anything. Relax. God, I didn't do anything. You got a bad attitude. Now, I pulled you over because you were swerving between lanes. That's all. Now, you got a choice here. If you cooperate, you're going to make things a whole lot easier on yourself. Now, what that means is you gotta be straight with me. You understand? Yeah. Here's the deal. You don't speak unless I ask a question. You understand? Yeah. All right. That hurts, man. That's too tight. Relax. You're fine. Now, where are you coming from? College. I'm coming from college, man. You've been having problems with gangs moving guns down this highway. You're not packing any Tech Nines in there, are you? No. No, sir. So you don't mind if I take a look? Ah, go ahead. All right, Darren, you just relax. You don't move. All right, stand up. Stand up. Walk back with me. Keep walking. Keep walking. All right, have a seat. Have a seat, Darren. Now cross your legs. Cross your legs! And when that cop was done roughing me up, he made me sit there like a dog while he ripped up my car. I've got nothing to hide, but that's disrespectful. All right, you sit tight. I sat there forever while he hung out in his car. All right, Darren, stand up. Stand up. Turn around. <sighs> this is a citation for excessive lane change. You take care of this as soon as possible. Sign that. Sign it. Here's your copy. Get your sh off my road. That cop profiled me. It's ridiculous. I go to school, I'm not a gun trafficker. I know exactly how you feel, man. That's why we're here. It's certainly possible you were profiled, but it's practically impossible to prove that. You never know for sure what's going on in an officer's head. I hate to say it, but from what I hear, it sounds like you broke the first rule of dealing with. Always be calm and cool. Hold up. Are you saying that he deserved to get treated like that? No, what I'm saying is the police encounter is absolutely the worst time and place to vent your frustrations about police. Getting stopped by police is always frustrating and scary, but you could have played it much smarter by being calm and cool. 
As soon as you opened your mouth, you failed the attitude test. License and registration? <sighs> yeah, I know the drill, man. Your attitude only got worse. <sighs> Whatever, man. Don't ever talk right. back. Step out of Don't ever right. raise your voice. Don't ever use Step profanity out. with a police officer. Turn around, put your hands in the air. Being hostile with police is stupid and dangerous. Well, you can't win the that game on the street on the where they're the king. Police have a dangerous job. Even the most professional officers might become aggressive if they feel threatened or if their authority is challenged. Always control your words, the tone of your voice and your body language. If you're visibly scared and angry, it's easy for an officer to get scared and angry too. Things could have turned out way worse than they did. Now! On your stomach! On your stomach! Think of a better way you could have greeted that officer. How's it going? That's better. Calm and cool. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's all this polite talk? They don't respect us, so why should we respect them? For real. This isn't just about respect. It's about common sense. If you don't check your ego at the door and you let it take control of you during a police encounter, you'll regret it every time. Following the rules doesn't guarantee that the police will respect your rights, but they can keep you from digging yourself into a deeper hole. Let's talk about what your rights are in the first place. This is the Bill of Rights. These are the first 10 amendments that were added to the U.S. Constitution after it was ratified in 1789. These rights are protected under federal law, which means everything we're talking about today applies in all 50 states. There are three amendments in particular that protect your rights during police encounters. The Fourth Amendment states that the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. The Fifth Amendment states that no person shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself, nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. During a police encounter, the smartest way to take the fifth is just to keep your mouth shut, because you always have the right to remain silent. We'll talk in a minute about how this works. In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. So if the police interrogate or arrest you, asking for a lawyer is a good way to assert your right to remain silent. Lawyer up. That's right. Regardless of what you have seen on TV, police don't usually have to read you your rights, even if you're arrested. So it's up to you to make sure that you understand the law and make smart choices. If police flag you down, pull over immediately, turn off your car and place your hands on the wheel. The police like to see your hands for their own safety, so wait until they request your paperwork before reaching for it. At night, it's also a good idea to turn on the interior light so that the officer can see you're not armed. Darren, do you see any ways you could have handled yourself better? Good evening, officer. How's it going? Did you know you were swerving between lanes? No, officer. Let me see your license and registration. Sure. My license. Here's my registration. Now, Darren, we've had some problems with gangs moving guns down this highway. You're not packing any Tech Nines, are you? No, sir. I didn't think so. So you don't mind if I take a look, do you? Officer, I know you're just doing your job. I don't have any guns or whatever, but I don't consent to searches. Perfect. Rule number three, you have the right to refuse searches. This comes directly from the Fourth Amendment. For your Fourth Amendment protection to legally apply, you must be prepared to clearly state your refusal under pressure. Everyone repeat after me. I don't consent to searches. I don't consent to searches. The officer can't hear you, so say it again. 
I don't consent to searches. One more time. I don't consent to searches. You a law student or something? So if I show that I know the rules, he might think I'm a law student. Or maybe I got big legal connections. Perhaps. But don't get carried away by saying stuff like, I know my rights, my Get out of my face, I'm going to sue you. Never tell the officer you know your rights. Show the officer you know your rights by asserting them calmly. You seem nervous. Is there anything in this car I need to know about? No, officer. All right. Please step out of the vehicle. Police may legally order you out of your vehicle, so you should comply. Walk back here with me. Yeah. Stand right here for me. Now, you got two choices. You can make this better or worse for yourself. Now, if you cooperate, it's going to make things a lot easier on you. Beware you that the police I'm may saying. legally lie to you, so never let false threats or promises trick you into waiving your rights. Now, if you don't, I'm going to call up a canine unit, and those dogs are going to rip apart your car. They're going to find what you're hiding. So what's it going to be? Refusing a search request is not evidence of guilt and doesn't give the officer the legal right to search or detain you. Don't get tricked. Unless you're detained or arrested, you may terminate the encounter at any time, but don't wait for the officer to dismiss you. Simply ask if you're free to go. There and those dogs are gonna rip apart your car and they're gonna find what you're hiding. Like I said, what's it gonna be? Officer, are you detaining me or am I free to go? Good. This line can help withdraw you from an encounter. Saying you want to leave establishes that the encounter is not voluntary, which could help you later if you end up in court. Let's practice that line. Everyone repeat after me. Are you detaining me or am I free to go? Are you detaining me or am I free to go? One more time. Are you detaining me or am I free to go? All right. You want to play it like that? You want to bump it up to the next level? Fine. You stay right here. Don't go anywhere. Asserting your rights won't make the police love you, but it might make them extra cautious about violating your rights. Darren, this is a citation for excessive lane changing. Take care of that as soon as possible. Thank you, officer. I understand refusing a search doesn't make me guilty, but if I'm doing nothing wrong, why don't I just let the police search me and get it done with? You have the right to let police search you. You also have the right to refuse. The choice is yours. But there are some reasons to think carefully about this. The officer isn't your butler. Searches can get real messy. If they damage anything, you might not be compensated because you agreed to the search. Besides, you never know for sure what a careless person, relative, friend, previous owner might have left in your car at some point. If the police find any illegal items after you consent to a search request, you can be arrested even if you had nothing to do with it. You have the right to Consenting to a search request automatically consent. makes the search legal in the it. eyes of the law. And the Fourth Amendment doesn't require officers to tell you about your right to refuse. So if you're pulled over, don't try to figure out whether or not the officer has probable cause to legally search you. You always have the right to refuse searches. I don't consent to searches. But they're going to search us anyway. Sometimes they will, but saying no isn't just about stopping the search. It might stop the search or it might not. Cross your leg. The point is that refusing the search could help you later if you end up in court. If the police search you without consent, your lawyer can challenge that. As your attorney, I'd be much more likely to win your case if you said no to the search. If I do not consent, when are police allowed to search my car? You mentioned probable cause. <laughs> what does that mean? Probable cause means police must have clear facts or evidence to believe you're involved in criminal activity. In other words, an officer's hunch without evidence of illegal activity is not enough to search or arrest you. But it doesn't take much. Most avoidable police searches happen not because police have probable cause. 
They happen because people get tricked or intimidated into consenting. So an expired registration isn't probable cause to search my car? No, it's not. But you still gotta be careful. Courts are eager to uphold police searches, so something suspicious about you or your car could be considered probable cause. I'm not the kind of guy to tell you how you should express yourself. Expressing yourself is one thing, but exposing yourself to police by being a public nuisance is ignorant. Everybody knows who I roll with. Rule number six, don't expose yourself. Mr. Murphy, I appreciate you being here today talking about constitutional rights and all, but in my hood, police don't care about nobody's right. They do whatever they want. Tell us more. The other day, I was leaving my building on my way to work. Uh-huh, ahorita, yeah. En 30 minutos llego. A las 5 dentro, chequeé el esquecho. Sumó, ahí te caigo. No, no voy a llegar tarde. Voy, voy. Ok, va. Let me see your pockets. Pull them out. Your ID? Got an ID here. Run that, please. Let me see your hat. I seen you coming out of there. Yeah, that's a known drug spot. It's my home. That's where I live at. You go to school? Or are you working? I work at a restaurant. That's where I'm going. Uh, mm -hmm. He's clean. Get your stuff. Thank you for your cooperation. You stay out of trouble. This is not the first time. It probably ain't the last. That's how they do around here. I'm not surprised. In cities across the country, these stop and frisks are occurring at record rates, especially in low-income communities of color. They happen so frequently, they seem perfectly normal to you. Yeah, that's how they do. This might be common, but that doesn't make it right. In fact, it sounds like those cops searched you illegally. Let me see your hands. Put them on the car. Spread. If police have reasonable suspicion to believe you're involved in a crime, they're legally allowed to detain you for a short period of time. Reasonable suspicion requires less evidence than probable cause, but it basically means the officer has some specific reason to believe that you're up to something. For example, police can legally stop someone who matches the description of a criminal suspect, a suspect who drops a suspicious object after seeing the police, or someone who runs away after seeing the police. Don't ever run from the police. That's part of what the officers can use for probable cause. And they'll run you down and make you regret it. But if you see police approaching, be calm and assert your rights if need be. But don't run. If they have reasonable suspicion to detain you, police may pat down the outside of your clothing to check for weapons, but only if they have a basis for suspecting that you're armed. If they feel a hard item that might be a weapon, the police may pull it out of your pocket to check it out. Police may ask you to show them what's in your pockets. Remember, you don't have to do it. Let me see Emptying your pockets is the same as consenting to a search, and you always have the right to refuse. In your case, uh, there appeared to be no basis to justify their stop and frisk. It happened so fast, it was over before I even knew it. What could I have done different? You don't have a lot of immediate options here. If police detain and frisk you, you have the right to clearly state your refusal to the consent to the search. Officer, I'm not resistant, but I do not consent to searches. But you should only verbally refuse, never physically resist, never. Just touching a cop could get you tasered or beaten. You could also get charged with felony assault. Face forward. Sometimes people get in trouble for merely standing near others holding contraband or if it is found nearby. 
Look what we have here. Police may try to get you to snitch on yourself or on others, but remember that police may legally lie to you, so don't get tricked into waiving your rights. Mm. Uh, we know you bought this weed. That makes you part of a drug conspiracy. Now you give up your supplier, or else we're gonna charge you as an accessory to drug trafficking. I'm gonna remain silent, I'd like to see a lawyer. I'm going to remain silent. I'd like to see a lawyer. If you're being interrogated or you're under arrest, these magic words are your best legal protection. They're kind of like a legal condom. Say them with me. I'm going to remain silent. I'd like to see a lawyer. I seen you drop this, man. Just admit it's yours. It's a slap on the wrist. You make things difficult for me, and I'll charge you with possession and evidence tampering. That's a felony. Don't get tricked. You know what to say. If police pressure you to snitch, you need a lawyer. Use the magic words. Officer, I'm going to remain silent. I'd like to see a lawyer. But remember, just because you ask for a lawyer doesn't mean they have to stop questioning you. If you keep talking, your words might still be used against you. So shut your mouth until you've seen a lawyer. But when do you actually get a lawyer? That depends. If you keep your mouth shut, you might not even need one. But if you're arrested and charged with a crime, you need help. If you can't afford a lawyer, one will be appointed for you by the court. The point is that you can't talk your way out of a police interrogation without a lawyer. That's a big mistake. Almost anything you say to the police can and will be used against you in court. But what if the police try to make you sign a confession or something? Don't sign anything without a lawyer. And don't rely on the police to explain what it says. Read it for yourself. Usually the only document that's safe to sign is a promise to appear in court. What if police come up to me just asking for ID? Hey, hold up, man. Let me see your ID. Carrying an ID is required when you're driving, but there's otherwise no law requiring you to carry an you ID. But in some states, police can require you to give your name if they have reasonable suspicion to believe you're involved in criminal activity. How do you know if police have reasonable suspicion? Remember, police need reasonable suspicion to detain you. So one way to tell if they have reasonable suspicion is to ask if you're free to go. Hey, hold up, man. Let me see your ID. Excuse me, officer. Are you? detaining me or am I free to go? I just want to talk to you, man. What's your name? Are you detaining me or am I free to go? I'm not detaining you, man, but I promise I'm clean. I sure don't got time man. to chat. Got to go. What if they don't let me go? Then you're being detained because the officer thinks there's some reason to suspect you of a crime. Let's see some ID. Excuse me, officer. Are you detaining me or am I free to go? Turn around put your hands up on the wall. In that situation, you could be arrested if you refuse to reveal your identity. Technically, police can't make you identify yourself anytime they want. But on the street, withholding your identity frequently leads to a detention or even an arrest. If your goal is to just get the encounter over with, then identifying yourself might be your best option. But if you're prepared to fight things out in court, you can flex your rights by refusing to cooperate with random ID requests. You say those police broke the rules searching me like that? What am I supposed to do? Call the cops on them? <laughs> Listen, fighting back against police misconduct is never easy, but it gets easier if you know your rights and if you act appropriately. What do I do? File a complaint? Does anyone read those? Oh yeah, they read them for sure. There are lots of bad cops who are off the streets because they get too many complaints. In cases of severe police misconduct can result in major lawsuits that change the way the police behave. I know that because I filed my share of them successfully. Here's what you need to know about reporting police misconduct. During the encounter, pay close attention to details. Remember the order of events. Remember as much as you can about the officers. What did they look like? What were their names? 
What were their badge numbers? Although you should never ask them for their badge number, that means to them you're about to make a complaint, and boy, does it get bad for you if they know that. So never tell them you're going to make a complaint against them. Remember the exact words that the officer says. Where's the dope? I ain't got nothing. Come on, man, give it up. As soon as you can, get everybody together who saw or heard anything about the incident. Sit down with them together. Listen to their recollections. Use whatever device you can to collect your thoughts. The longer you wait, the less you will remember. The black cop and the white cop. Put them on the car. And try to find other witnesses if you can. You'll need this evidence later. Reaching in the bag, man. Anyway. If you were injured during a police incident, make sure somebody photographs you at your worst as soon as possible. Make copies of any relevant hospital records. If you're thinking about responding to a police misconduct incident, visit flexyourrights.org to learn more about your options. Don't be discouraged just because you've heard about police abusing their power and getting away with it. Now that you know your rights, you've got more power to demand accountability. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Murphy, is it legal for, for the police to go around knocking on people's doors, asking for, uh, asking to search? Unfortunately, yes. Did something happen? It was last Saturday afternoon. I was in my home relaxing after a long week. Have you been in an accident? Injured on the job? You need a lawyer with experience, integrity, and a commitment to you, the citizen of this great nation. Call me Boris Krakowitsky. Who is it? Police department. Good afternoon, ma'am. I'm Officer Smith. What's your name? I'm Karen Stewart. E everything all right? How can I help you? Miss Stewart, do you mind if we come in for a moment? One second. Officer Jones here are introducing ourselves to the tenants as part of a new home safety program. We're available if you need any help. Miss Stewart, are you here alone? Oh uh, yes. My granddaughter lives here too, but she's at school. I'm sure you know there's been some gang-related shootings in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Well, we're trying to do something to get the guns off the streets and we're asking folks to help out. Of course. How can I help? Well, if you don't mind, we'll take a quick look around to make sure there's no guns in your home you might not know about. <laughs> if there are no guns in here, go ahead. Great. Just sign this form for me, please. I appreciate your cooperation. Miss Stewart, I see you have an extensive book collection. You like to read a lot? Oh, I love to read. Mm -hmm. I'm always reading something. <laughs> oh, okay. I love to read too, but between my job and my two children, I just don't have the time anymore. <laughs> I understand that. So you say your granddaughter is in school? College? Yes, yes uh-huh. She's a freshman. How wonderful. Ma'am, I'm gonna search this couch here. You mind stepping up for me? Uh oh. What's this? Can you tell me about this marijuana I just found on your couch? What's that? Don't play dumb. You know what it is. It isn't mine. I I cook for some of the children in, in the neighborhood. 
Somebody probably left it there by mistake. I, I, I don't know. You really ought to pay more attention to what happens in your home. Miss Stewart, I appreciate your cooperation. I hate to do this. Please put your hands behind your back. You're under arrest. Under arrest? What are you arresting me for? I, 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 I don't know. I, I, it isn't mine. Miss Stewart, I, I'm, I'm taking you to the station. You can tell your story to the judge. Turn to your right. You don't have to do this. No, stop. Stop. The worst part is I live in public housing and there's a zero tolerance rule. I'm fighting the eviction order now. Did you all hear that, folks? Remember that the next time somebody tells you nobody ever gets in trouble for weed. I shouldn't have let them inside. See, this is how they get you. Police come knocking at your door saying, hey there, we've got a new safety program. Can we search your home? Hell no. You don't have to let them in. Even if the police have probable cause, the Fourth Amendment requires them to get a signed search warrant from a judge to enter and search your home. Unless there's a serious emergency, they can't come in without a search warrant. But they don't need a warrant if you invite them in. When the officers came knocking, Karen could have talked to them outside and closed the door behind her. Good afternoon, officers. How can I help you? The chain lock works fine, too. Who is it? Police department. Good afternoon, officers. How can I help you? Hi, ma'am. Do you mind if we come in for a moment? Do you have a warrant? What is this about? No, my name is Officer Smith. This is Officer Jones. We're introducing ourselves to the tenants as part of a new home safety program. Mind if we come in? Uh, no, thank you. I can't let you in without a warrant. Again? I can't let you in without a warrant. That is your decision, ma'am. But this is just a public safety check. We're not here to get anyone in trouble. I understand, but I need to see a warrant before letting you folks inside. Well, ma'am, you have my card if you need anything. Have a nice day. Take care. We're clear. If police come to your door and you don't need their help, you may simply decline to answer the door because you don't have to let them in unless they have a search warrant. We've covered a lot today, but we've only scratched the surface. If you want to learn about the 10 rules for dealing with police, contact us at the website, flexyourrights.org. Any more questions? Set. Yeah. Cameras move slow when the street get wet. Action. Shake them up, roll money down, it's a bet. Uh -huh. G's on the set, throw it up right to left. I move like the city, so the streets come with me. Back pocket whiskey, keep me all pissy. Street thoughts got the feeling like a seesaw. Up, down, back up, I need to see more. The lean so mean, the gear all clean. Left arm up, steering the machine. Eyes in the rear view, gotta keep a clear view. When that money talk, the block gonna hear you. Ride with a rider, it'll be Diana. Every ass a movie, the script got drama. So your boy gets busy. Watch how I move. I move like the city. I move okay, uh, welcome back. I hope that that worked uh, as well as, as uh, broadcasting a video over Zoom uh, ever works. But um, uh, in the meantime, while that was playing, we received several questions that I'm going to pose to our panelists um, in the chat. Feel free to keep those coming as you go. I've also um, been uh, monitoring the the Facebook. So if you uh, leave a, if you're not on the Zoom call but you're watching on Facebook and you leave a comment there, uh, it'll it'll uh, get to me. I want to thank our, our intern Bridget Maloney for monitoring that and, uh, and and texting me questions as we go. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, and post some questions to our panelists. Um, let me ask you the first question that that. Uh, uh, is I found to be kind of a common misconception. In every Hollywood movie that I have ever watched, 
Uh, there's a scene where somebody says uh, to, to a, someone they suspect of being an undercover cop, are you a cop? If you are, you have to tell me uh, or else it's entrapment. Uh, that, that is a rule in Hollywood that, that undercover cops have to tell you that they are undercover cops uh, if you ask them. Is that true? All right. <laughs> Anyone care to elaborate? Cops can lie to you. <laughs> That's basically it. <laughs> There's a whole like Supreme Court case that says, U.S. Supreme Court case that says cops can lie to you. So no, they don't have to tell you the truth. Uh, l let me ask another question that I've, I've, I've heard this one several times because we talked about cops can lie to you. Uh, is there a limit to that? Suppose, uh, suppose a cop comes up to you and says, I know that you have marijuana on you. If you just give it to me, if you just, wherever it is on your body or in your, in your, your backpack or wherever, just, just hand it to me and I promise I'm not going to arrest you. Do they have to keep that promise? I'm getting a universal no <laughs> from everybody. Um, so it, again, the, the point is that cops are legally allowed to lie to you. Um, so when, when what, what should you say um, um, if, if a police officer comes up to you and, and says, I know that you have marijuana on you, just hand it to me and, and I promise I'll be on my way and I'm not gonna arrest you. What would be a, 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 an answer that you, if, if they were able to freeze time and call you on the, on the cell phone and say, a cop is asking me this question, how should I answer it? What would you tell them? No, lawyer. <laughs> no, I would go, lawyer. do you have a warrant? I would go back to the advice from the video, uh, ask, am I being detained or am I free to go? Um, now, let me ask this question. Let's see. Um, Here's a question that I think probably everyone watching this has been asked at some point or another, and, and I would love to hear from a panel of uh, criminal defense attorneys. You get pulled over and you roll down your window and the first question is either, do you know why I pulled you over? Or um, do you know how fast you were going? Is there a good answer to that question? It, it seems that if you say, no, I don't know how fast I was going, that's gonna make it difficult for you to deny that you were speeding in court. Uh, but if you say, yes, I do know why you pulled me over, it's because I was exceeding the speed limit, uh, then that's also going to be used against you in court. So is there a good answer to that question? <laughs> I mean, uh, other, other than basically just being in, in, a, in a traditional situation, if you're running down the road and uh, it's a traffic citation type situation, uh, you just generally say no. Uh, I, I just politely say no and then and let them ask the next question. Politely say, no, I don't know why you pulled me over or I don't, or I don't know how fast. No, I just simply, I, I, I always advocate for, for less is more. So correct. no, sir, no, ma'am. And then just, you know, simply let them lead into the next question. Like literally don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> like the least amount possible. Let, let me ask, cause I, I have a, uh, uh, a panel of criminal defense attorneys, and I love to ask this question to, to especially to groups of criminal defense attorneys. In your entire careers, have you ever had a case where uh, one of your clients uh, was able to help themselves or end up in a better situation uh, than, than they otherwise would have been by talking uh, to the police about the circumstances surrounding their arrest at the moment of arrest? Have you ever had a client who was better off for having spoken to the police than, uh, than for having, than they would have been if they had just remained silent. No, no, absolutely not. I've actually had clients that have made it extremely worse for them that I'm literally like reading police reports or watching the video. And I'm like, if you would have just shut up, if you would have literally just shut up, like I could have gotten you out of this. Like, but you literally talked yourself and not only to an arrest, but into a conviction, like literally no. I was only a criminal defense attorney for about three years, and I represented almost a thousand people. Not one of those made the situation better for themselves. Just echoing uh, what was already said, if anything, they would make it worse. And even if they tried to argue away something, they would end up 
inadvertently admitting to another crime. So it may not be the charge that they thought they were going to get, but it could ultimately end up being another charge that they unknowingly admitted to. Um, so here, here's a question that uh, a, a couple of people have asked. Uh, and and uh, what are the rules for recording the police on your cell phone? Let's say um, you are being pulled over or, or, uh, or you're, you're standing on the sidewalk and the police start asking you questions. Or you, somebody, that, a, a friend or a complete stranger is being uh, pulled over or, or uh, uh, is having an encounter with the police. Can you just take out your cell phone and, and record that encounter? You want me to feel that, uh, James? Um, yes, you're, you're our First Amendment <laughs> lawyer specialist. Um, yeah, I think over the last roughly two decades, there have been um, uh, a handful of, of federal appellate court decisions that have addressed this issue. And basically the, where they come out is that um, police do not have a, uh, any reasonable expectation of privacy um, when they're uh, engaging in their official duties in a public place. Um, so what you've seen is, is uh, police officers trying to use various state wiretap laws that um, are designed to um, prevent uh, recordings uh, without others' consent and trying to use those to um, go after individuals who uh, record their activities. Um, those arguments have generally been rejected on First Amendment grounds. Um, so in Florida, we have um, a, well, recording laws can vary from state to state. Most states are one party consent states. So if you're doing the recording and you're obviously consenting to that recording, um, that's enough to get out from under the wiretap statute. Um, in Florida, it is actually all party. It's a minority uh, view in that regard. Um, but there are uh, exceptions to that when you're engaging with somebody who doesn't have a reasonable expectation of privacy, the conversation's going on in public, they know they're being recorded and, and are continuing the conversation, things like that. So, um, you know, with police, I think that, you know, that expectation of privacy just isn't there. So you have that right to record. Um, now, that being said, um, you know, if you're the person being detained, and you're talking to the police officer, and you know, you have your cell phone on and but at some point it, it becomes an arrest. Obviously you can't continue to just sort of obstruct the arrest um, for the sake of recording. Um, you know, that's, that's problematic. And the same, same would go for a third party who may be recording an interaction between the police and another individual. Um, you're there sort of as a, a bystander. You, you can't interfere with that um, interaction um, or you, you'll risk arrest yourself. Um, so you, you always wanna make sure that when you're in that situation, you're recording a, a police officer, you're, you're, you're at a, a distance where you can't be accused of interfering with the investigation or the arrest. Um, so it's sort, sort of like when we tell journalists here, you know, you're covering a sporting event, um, you're, not, you're not on the field with the players, you're at a distance, you, know, you don't mix it up, you're not becoming part of the story yourself. Um, you, get, you don't get to inject yourself like that. So, so generally, yeah, there is a First Amendment right um, to record and the efforts to sort of come after individuals under various state wiretap laws have largely proven unsuccessful. Um, and again, that's in the context of a uh, interaction uh, with a police officer that's engaging in official duties in a public space. Um, so that, that's where the law is on that. Somebody asked an interesting question. We were talking a minute ago about um, whether or not the police are allowed to lie to you. And uh, all of our attorneys agree that yes, they are legally allowed to lie to you. Um, someone asked the question, are we allowed to lie to them? If, uh, is, is, is it legal to lie to a cop? <laughs> Go ahead if someone wants to elaborate. No, um, I'll jump in and uh, uh, friends feel free to join in. It's, it's I mean, it, there's, always, there's always a possibility you get a charge for an obstruction, right? Uh, you, you don't want to lie, you, it, it's, you're better off just not saying anything. I, I feel like that's kind of common sense, but when you're in that situation and the pressure's on and there's all these moving parts, you sometimes, you know, forget, but but no, you're not allowed to lie to the cops because they'll tack on another charge. Um, and, and you that kind of transitions into the next uh, question. Somebody asked, um, you, we talked to, you talked about tacking on a charge. Uh, a common tack on charge that you see is resisting an arrest without violence. Uh, 
I think we all kind of can guess what resisting arrest with violence would mean or battery on a law enforcement officer, but what is resisting arrest without violence? Is that uh, trying to escape or is, is just talking back and not being 100% compliant? What, what is it if, if, the, uh, if, if the police have made it clear that their intention is to arrest you, what is it that you should do or not do to avoid having that charge tacked on? I just also, uh, just initially, I want to clarify, it's actually not a risk, uh, resisting arrest without violence. The charge in Florida is actually called resisting an officer without violence. And I think that distinction is important because an officer doesn't even need to necessarily be making an arrest for someone to be charged with resisting an officer without violence. And resisting could be obstructing or opposing the officer who is engaged in the execution of a legal duty, which could potentially be investigating a crime of some sort. And also with that, uh, to Jackie's point, there's actually been a lot of litigation with the constitutionality with regard to obstructing, with regard to the vagueness of it. I know I've been able to file motions and kind of get, um, be successful on it because obstructing can be, and there's like a bevy of case law, you know, if I, so for example, um, say Madge, my homeboy, is like getting arrested and I'm over here like, you don't have to talk to them. Like they could hit me with an obstructing or resisting an officer. I'm literally like not even getting in the middle, not in physically inserting myself. I could be, you know, you know, a couple feet away. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to do anything. And if that officer believes that they are in, you know, executing a lawful duty of questioning him, arresting him, I could then get arrested for that. And then there's actual like technical case law without getting wonky that talks about, is that actually legal? Are you able to actually do that? Those kinds of things. I mean, I know that I was able to win on a motion to dismiss in felony court because of my client was hit with a resisting, um, resisting an officer with a bunch of other things. And, um, and one of the things was about his ID and how, and, and it was just, it, so there's a lot of technical issues with that, but essentially I always boil it down to if you're not complying the way that particular officer wants you to comply, that they're gonna they're gonna hit you with that. That's the, just the catch all arrest. Yeah, and Michelle is absolutely right. It's 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 basically the officer getting annoyed and um, and and annoyed at, at a defendant a citizen trying to assert their rights. Um, and I know that I was reading through some of the uh, some of the questions, and you know, there's there's a really good point in that. Um, you know, some of the stuff that the, the video was talking about, uh, the attorney in the video was talking about, about being, you know, being polite to officers. Uh, it's kind of hard to be polite when um, officers are being, you know, I know it's the ACLU thing, so you guys don't mind if I cuss, if they're being assholes, right? It, it's, it's challenging for us to maintain our cool, especially when it is, you know, the, the poor behavior um, is coming from these people that you're entrusting for your safety. Uh, and they're an arm of the state, and they're, and they're making you feel, you know, uh, less than them. Um, but but Michelle is absolutely right. In situations, um, there are certain facts, fact specific situations that someone can actually get. Maybe they're charged, dismissed later in court because of the case law. However, it's really important to know that there's no judge on scene. So so a cop is just going to do whatever a cop is going to do. They're going to arrest you, and then you have to deal with that problem later on. Uh, so it's really up to you, the citizen, to determine, you know, do I want to deal with this for the next several months in court, uh, or do I want to try to defuse the situation as fast as possible? But Madge, I want to, like, even to your point, for Black and Brown folks, it's not even a question of do I be polite, it's more of a question, can I survive this encounter? Right. And how do I survive this encounter? And so yeah. for Black and Brown folks and trans folks, it's not necessarily of, like, well, I can be, you know, a jerk or be what mouthy is, is my mouthiness, whatever you want to call it. Is that going to cost me my life? Absolutely. It's not, it's not even just the arrest. It's, it's literally a, a person with a firearm who can kill you. Correct. So and that kind of transfer, uh, leads into a question that Ben asked. He, he wrote, uh, 
this video uh, from Flex Your Rights, it, see, it feels a bit optimistic toward the police and to, to just submit to the system. Is that the best approach? Yeah, that is. I mean, I think that's all you have to do. That's all you have available to you. And we know that, you know, compliance is not always enough, but what else are you going to do? I think that, um, you know, uh, if you don't, if you try to exercise, you know, I tell my clients, don't, please don't try to litigate your case from the, the side of the road. Like this is not the time to, to, even if you know the stop was foolishness, like you shouldn't have done it. This is not the time to do that. This is the time to just say, okay, okay, okay. And try to, de to try to deescalate the situation. And it's sad that it is incumbent on a civilian to deescalate the situation rather than the sworn, you know, trained officer to de-escalate the situation. Absolutely. Um, Michelle, you, you, you mentioned uh, trans folks. One of the question um, uh, from Z is, uh, reading it, it says, as a Black trans disabled person, do I have any special rights, uh, especially of exemption, when it comes to being searched or detained to help protect me from physical or sexual assault? Uh, essentially, is there any way I can refuse them touching any parts of me besides my wrists when I get arrested. And I'll, I'll tack onto that question a, a few people asked before this. Uh, if you are, are transgender, what is there anything in the world that you can do to maybe help your own situation to stop you from being misgendered when you get to the jail, if you're a trans woman, to stop them from throwing you into a holding cell with, with, with cis men? Um, what, what advice would you have for somebody who's transgendered who is having an encounter with the police or being arrested? I'll say as to the searches, um, the question that Z asked, I would ask for an officer of the gender that I identify with and specifically state why, let them know and speak out. And, and the same at the jail, there, there's no law that protects transgender people in the jail to protect them from being categorized by um, the gender that's specified on their driver's license, but request it, speak out, ask for a supervisor, ask for accommodations. Um, Omar asked, do you have the right to refuse to get out of the car uh, until you're told why you're being arrested? If they say, um, you know, get out of the car, I'd like to arrest you. Do you have the right to be told why you're being arrested uh, before you, you have to get out of the car? I, 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 you don't have a right necessarily to be told specifically why um, the officer, the officer, in other words, the officer doesn't have to necessarily tell you, but there has to be a reason, uh, obviously, and, and there has to be at least at that point, probable cause to investigate a, a crime that has occurred, is occurring, or is about to occur. Um, so in order to pull someone out of your car, that, that really turns into a full investigatory detention. Um, and, and along with that, there are a lot of rights that attach. But again, you know, not complying with that demand to get out of the car, um, although you may necessarily, although you may objectively be within your rights, as the court would see it, in that moment, not getting out of the car is going to be the officer then just dragging you out of the car and then hitting you with, as we discussed, the aminoid officer charge of resisting an arrest without violence. Also, that is not the time to litigate the facts of, do I have the right to get out the car? Should I get out the car? I don't think I need to get out the car. I, I would tell you, please get out the car and, you know, have your attorney, you know, it should their arrest, you know, stem from that, have your attorney litigate those facts, you know, and it's hard because when folks do know their rights, you have to balance that with you are in front of someone who uh, has the authority to, to to take your liberty away, to to put you in jail. And you have to kind of balance that with, this is probably not the appropriate time to assert those rights. And those, that kind of is a hard balance to have when, you're, when we're talking about knowing your rights, but then you may not be able to assert that in the way that would, ab would enable you to kind of have self-determination, right? I, I got uh, Janae and Jordan both asked kind of variations on the same question. Uh, I'll, I'll read Jordan's. It was, uh, if an officer says he stopped me because I matched the description of a bolo, a be on the lookout, 
and, and he begins questioning me and assuming I'm innocent, should I be cooperatively, cooperatively answering as many questions? There's, there's, uh, th that's a, that's a difficult hypothetical, at least in my opinion, um, because, uh, it, it, I mean, it's, it really depends on kind of the situation, the facts in the situation, um, I guess to a certain extent, the attitude and credibility of the officer that you can kind of gauge as, as an individual. Um, look, at the end of the day, I'm not, you know, I'm not, <laughs> certainly I'm not one that officers would probably consider uh, a pro officer kind of person. But at the end of the day, officers are human beings just like us, and they have their own, um, you know, I, I think you can kind of tell a little bit, um, but not complying with that officer. Again, you may be within your legal rights, uh, but if you are actually completely innocent and then there's, you know, there's nothing on you, there's no, you know, you haven't had anything to drink or, you know, whatever, and you, and you just kind of like the video was saying, and you just kind of like want to wrap this situation up, then you can just briefly engage, I, I would say, depending on circumstances. I, w I would say maybe identify yourself if you have ID on you to show who you are and then ask if you can leave. Ask for an attorney. Right. Ask if you're being detained. That, that's a great transition because a couple of people asked also variations on this question. If, uh, if the police, are the police allowed to just walk up to you and ask you for your ID? And are you supposed to give it to them? Another variation on that question was, uh, especially vis-a-vis -vis protesters, what are the pros and cons of identifying yourself and providing ID or refusing to do that? So the, the scenario is you are standing on the sidewalk or minding your own business or at a protest and an officer comes up to you and says, I need your name and I need your ID. How should you handle that situation? There's, again, there's, 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 uh, you know, I guess let, let's, let's stick to the real world. Um, uh, with the protests going on these days, uh, the officers the way they are. Um, look, it, again, going back to Gretchen's point, I think everyone's making the same point is you, you want to know whether or not you're being detained. Right. Uh, the reality is, is, and this is what I want all the viewers to really understand. When you, when you ask that question of, am I being detained? Cops hate that question because it, I mean, they hate it because it means they are no longer in control and able to manipulate you. And when they get that question, it backs them into a corner and, you know, hopefully you get one that's, you know, you, you get a cop that's just going to follow along, walk on and, and mind his own business. I can tell you in reality, you know, I'm sure a lot of our viewers have been in this situation. That doesn't really happen, right? They're going to continue to press the situation. So, um, kind of a, as a video alluded to, you know, it's, if it's a, if you kind of case by case basis, if you can just give me your ID and get out of there, uh, if you think that that's going to do it, maybe do it. But otherwise, I don't, you know, I generally would say if you're not being detained, turn around and walk away um, if they say no. Janae, by the way, Janae, you're asking great questions. Janae also asks, at what point is the is the time to ask for a lawyer? At, at what point do you say to the police officer, I, I want a lawyer? I would say as soon as they say that you're being detained. If you ask if you're being detained and they say yes. Yeah. James, I wanted to elaborate on an earlier question regarding do the police have to tell you uh, what they are arresting you for. I would say based on, there's a Supreme Court case, Devin Peck v. Alford, where the Supreme, and I believe it's a 2004 case, where the Supreme Court says it's good police practice, but it's not necessarily required. And that was in the discussion in the opinion. So obviously it is good police practice and they should be doing that, but it's not necessarily required. However, in Florida, we have the benefit of what's called first appearances. And everyone in Florida who is arrested within 24 hours of arrest, you know, unless there's a hurricane or something coming and they have to cancel court, but within 24 hours of arrest, you have the right to go in front of a judge and understand and know what the charges are being brought against you. And in addition, within the first appearance hearing, you will also have the opportunity then to ask for a lawyer if you cannot afford one. 
and then the judge can make a determination at that time if your financial situation uh, deems you eligible for an appointed attorney. So I just want everyone to know that luckily in Florida, not every state has this where you get to go in front of a judge, um, you know, the very next day. Let me and ask you this. can actually watch, if you're ever curious, you can watch first appearances in Tampa uh, any day of the week. Um, and I'm sure they're doing them online now. Gretchen or Michelle, you might yes, know. They are, you can could, you could find them on, um, Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office has a link, you can watch them. So if, if uh, and, and I think many of us have seen a video of this exact thing happening, the, the police come up to somebody and they put them in handcuffs and uh, they, they put them in the back of a squad car and the person is asking, why am I being arrested? And they're not answering the question. Uh, what, what should you do in that circumstance where the police are arresting you and they're not explaining uh, why? Uh, I just keep quiet. Once you're in the back of a cop car, Everything is being recorded, uh, your body language, what you say, how you act, you know, just keep quiet. At that point, you're not going to talk yourself out of it. Who cares? And we've no. seen that this has actually been the case in, you know, Hillsborough County and also Pinellas County, especially with protesters. And some, I mean, there's a story that came to me yesterday of a young woman that was arrested for kidnapping and false imprisonment, right? never has had a criminal history ever. I, from my understanding, was not really aware of what she was being arrested for until she got booked in. And so, you know, we also have to balance that with the terror of like, it's terroristic. I mean, let's just like call it what it is, right? Of being arrested, not knowing why you're being arrested. And then, um, and then the natural inclination of someone who believes they have not done anything wrong is to talk is to explain yourself. That is the natural inclination that you have. That is, I am a lawyer. I, that, it, that is my natural inclination of saying, well, if I didn't do anything wrong, let me just explain to you and we want, you know, we should be good. And you, we have to, you have to know in this system, unfortunately, that natural inclination is not the best inclination. And so to agree with, you know, Mr. Vasai, to agree with Madge, you have to make sure that when you're in the back of a police car and when you, you are, you know, it's being recorded. And when you are going through, depending where you're at in the jail, it could be recorded as well. And you just have to be mindful of that. Let me drive that home because I don't know that everybody knows that. If you are in the back of a police car or in anywhere close to a police car, you are being recorded. And uh, if that information is ever useful to you, you are welcome. Um, Samantha asked a great question, which is, she says, the discussion that we're having right now about complying uh, with, with the police to avoid being charged with resisting without violence uh, seems to contradict what the video said. Uh, is, is telling the police no when they ask if they can search your car or if they ask if they can search your, your person, it, it, isn't that not complying? Can you be, if you tell them, no, you may not search my car or no, you may not search me, can they charge you with, uh, with, with failure to comply? Right. So I think we have to make like a really bright line distinction. When I say complying, I mean, yes, sir. No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Those are things. But when you ask me to search my vehicle, there is a law that says I don't have to comply unless you have a warrant. There is a law that says that you have to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G before I need to comply or you can just do a search. Or if you want to do a warrantless search, there has to be other factors that are met in order for a warrantless search to happen. So I think when we think about complying, we need to make sure, I think of it as you're not arguing with the police officer. You're not being disrespectful. You are yes sir, no sir. If they're asking you to do a lawful command, like what is your name? Where, let me see your license. Please step out the car. You do those kinds of things. But when it goes into the realm of, can I search your vehicle? Can I? I'm going to ask you some questions about an event that took place and I need you to answer those questions. Now that is a body of law that says you cannot do this unless these, um, you know, this criteria has been met. Um, obviously I would defer to, to any of the other attorneys on here if they, um, with, for their opinion as well. Yeah, I, I could chime in just to follow up with, with Michelle. Uh, it, I, I, and I saw someone else in the, uh, in the questions asking the same thing about, um, uh, isn't isn't 
not answering a cop's question also uh, resisting isn't isn't uh, not answering um, isn't isn't saying I, I'm not talking and asking if I want a lawyer also resisting. Thankfully, a handful of constitutional um, you know uh, protections exist against unreasonable search and seizure, the Fourth Amendment. Uh, against self-incrimination, the Fifth Amendment, those things um, cannot be used against you, right? Those things, those are, those are, at least for now, um, hard, <laughs> hard constitutional protections that uh, thankfully, uh, you know, cops uh, can't charge you with a crime for asserting, you know, your, your Fifth or Fourth Amendment protections. Um, but outside of that, everything else, uh, kind of piggyback on what Michelle was saying is, is that's exactly right. Yeah. So Ben just asked uh, where, where he hears the term lawful command. Uh, we hear that frequently. What guidelines are there? How can you know whether the command you're being given is a lawful one or not? Or does that fall within uh, on the side of the road face to face with a police officer is not the right time to litigate that? Bingo. Yeah, I think it's is when when they go low, we go high. Uh, you got to do that in court. You're not going to do that on the side of the road. There's no judge. There's no prosecutor. Um, you know, a, a friend a friend of mine um, uh, made an interesting social media post about his young child, and his child asked him, "Dad, um, aren't so so in order to be a cop, that means you got to go to law school, right?" And my, my attorney friend said, "No, you don't." And the child said, "Well, why not? Don't." Cops just deal with laws all day, uh, and and the reality is is the cops aren't lawyers. Uh, they are trained for twelve weeks in basically what the law is, and um, they do their best. The mistakes that they make out there in the field, it's up to us. You know, we don't have a time machine; we can't go back and prevent them from doing it. But what we can do is assert your rights in court. So the less. Um, you know, the, the less you say and the less you argue at the time, the better it is for, for us as your attorney to try to help you. Yeah. I would also always be sure to assert, Gretchen, are you talking? Sorry, I don't want to talk over you. Oh, go ahead. I'll go after okay. you. Great. I just uh, want everyone to know that it's best if you assert that you are exercising your rights, and that includes asserting your right to remain silent. I know that seems a little contradictory but there is really good case law supporting a reasoning for doing that. Um, Salinas v. Texas, which was a 2013 case out of the Supreme Court, essentially said that if you end up going to trial, they can use it against you that you were talking, 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 and then you just went quiet. They can use that against you. So it's best if you just say, I am asserting my right to remain silent, and then they cannot use that against you. Let, let me ask, Mabel asked a good question too. Can the police go through your phone if you're being detained? Can they uh, take your phone and start reading your text messages and emails? Can they, can they, uh, can they make you unlock your phone? Uh, it, we all carry these phones around with us and they have a lot more information in them about ourselves than we probably want the whole world to know. Can a police officer just rifle through it? Generally, no. They, they need a warrant. I would, I would definitely have my phone password protected. I don't use a facial recognition, anything like that. I use passwords. That helps protect you. Right. And, and Gretchen, the, the reason, of course, for, uh, for the password, right, is that a password is still some private confidential knowledge uh, yes. that you have, that you are, it's basically serves as a lock on your phone. Whereas your facial recognition or your thumbprint is just biographical kind of you know data that they can just shove the phone up to your face and unlock it, uh, and that's just a you know it's one less fight that you wanna you wanna have. So uh, you, you can then litigate. But but um, if your phone is unlocked uh, and it's sitting right there in you know plain sight, they'll pick it up and go through it. So you know keep it locked. Yeah, and there, there was a, a recent case out of Indiana um, just uh, in the last couple of months discussing this very issue where um, the court said that, you know, being required to, to give up your password is essentially testimonial and violation of your Fifth Amendment rights. So I want to add, I do think there may be conflicting case law throughout the country. So this may actually be an issue that ultimately goes to the Supreme Court. 
about what constitutes self-incrimination and what doesn't. So I guess stay tuned as uh, the law progresses on that. Roderick asked an excellent question. Can you call, oh, I'm sorry, Michelle, go ahead. Hold on, I was gonna ask, sorry, I was on mute. Mark, didn't we have a case here in Tampa that I think it was like Bryant Camarino's case that was actually about cell phones and unlocking your cell phone. Um, it was in circuit court. I think it was like a like a murder case or something like that. Y'all remember that case? It was a couple of like, maybe about two years ago where there was like a whole like bevy of case law <clears throat> and they felt that he had incriminating information in his cell phone. Y'all remember that? Oh, didn't they hold <clears throat> him in contempt? Yeah. I think I remember what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and I forget what it what, what the reasoning was, but they held him in contempt. <clears throat> I Sorry. think until he would unlock his phone. The court ordered them to unlock their phone and, and, uh, and held them in contempt when they refused? That, uh, yes, but it, it was a major crime. It wasn't, you know, somebody filming while protesting. Yeah, it was like a, it was like a serious crime. Yeah. Okay. Was it a situation where they, they knew what they were looking for on the phone or? I think so. They were trying yeah. to believe that he had been communicating or there was something on the phone that would have tied him to that specific crime. Yeah. And I want to say... I can't remember the outcome of it and I would have to look it up or ask Bryant, but it, I mean, it was, it was a lot of litigation back and forth. I think it even went to the second DCA on it. Yeah. And you guys would probably know better than me, but I think that's one of the wrinkles in, in sort of self-incrimination law. If they know what they're looking for, um, you know, that then it may not be considered a testimonial if you have to give up the information to sort of unlock the box rather than a, just a pure fishing expedition to see what's on your phone. And, and honestly, and I also tell my clients, uh, download the Signal app. Um, it's uh, totally encrypted. There's a lot of kind of good you can do with it without really getting into the details. Uh, Roderick's got a great question. Can you call a lawyer on the spot if you're being held, if you're being pulled over and uh, and you have Madge Vasai's cell phone number? Can I just dial it and uh, and have him, uh, you know? mediate that confrontation. Michelle's shaking her head no. For the right <laughs> retainer you can, yeah. <laughs> right. So I actually my nephew nice cop. My nephew would call me on the spot. Like he would call me like when he would get pulled over, call me at like three o'clock in the morning. And I was like, so listen, it's three o'clock in the morning. You have woken me up. I am not I am not in the capacity to have any conversation with a law enforcement officer. Ninety percent of the time the law enforcement officer knew who I was and they were like, all right, Miss Rainer, we'll you know we'll let him go. But no, you can't because there's a whole like other thing of like, it creates like attorney client, you know, attorney client privilege, representation, all those kinds of things. Like, no, so you, you unless you have a retainer agreement with a lawyer, match the side and you're paying him good money for, <laughs> for him to pick up your call, like you can't. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I mean, Elizabeth, she's exactly right. Uh, you know, under very limited circumstances, is that ever really gonna present itself as a, as a real world solution and the officer gets mad when they you call a lawyer to begin with like oh like it, it just becomes like a thing it doesn't need to be right uh, here's, z asked this this question that this one is uh cogent to uh some of the the recent protests z asks if the protest if protesters are blocking a road that's not a highway it's it's a side street or or a, you know a road that's not a highway can the, can they use their first amendment rights to stay in the road or do they have to get out of the road when the cops t announce that they have to? If you're so, the question is: you're 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 blocking the road as part of a protest, and the police come up and they and they order you out of the road. Uh, can you stay there? Does the First Amendment entitle you to stay there, notwithstanding the commander? Do you have to get out of the way? The real um, question is: do you want to get arrested or not? Right. Yeah, because um, you are, you know breaking the law generally you're, you're jaywalking in the road maybe obstructing traffic even if it's not a busy street um so you're, you know your best bet there is to stay on sidewalks um in public parks other public forum places that aren't are not the road obviously with you know you'll have large protests sometimes that spill out into the road and the police will will tolerate that for a while or in anticipation of a protest maybe cordon off some portion of the street um but you know at some point they're 
they're going to say, okay, now cars are going to need to come through here again and, and, you know, issue a dispersal order and lawful dispersal orders need to be complied with, or you, you will risk getting arrested or, you know, sprayed or something worse. Yeah, it's it's the definition of good trouble, but it's still a trouble. Correct. <clears throat> Let me ask this question too, because I think the one piece of criminal procedure law that every junior high school student knows is that uh, when arresting you, the police are supposed to read you your Miranda rights. You yeah. have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court. Uh, but the question is, what happens if they don't? Uh, if if uh, the police arrest you and they never read you those rights, uh, what what does that mean for you? <laughs> oh, the joys of being a criminal defense attorney. Um, <laughs> Go ahead, Michelle. I always say, you know, I say, you know, I say, well, they have to read you your Miranda rights, but they don't have to read you your Miranda rights. Are you being questioned? Are you being questioned about the crime that you're being arrested for are you being questioned or if they are just simply arresting you saying hey you know mr mr or mrs such and such i'm arresting you for this and we're putting you in their car and they don't talk to you they don't have to do anything but if they're saying hey you know what well, tell me about you know when you were doing this and tell me about how this happened or tell me about you know the circumstances surrounding whatever alleged crime that you're being arrested for at that time they do have to read you your right so i would say for me it's the interrogation factor when they start questioning you about those things but if they're just simply saying are resisting without violence we're going to arrest you they don't have to tell you you're being arrested for get, get you behind in the car and you know whatever they don't have to question you about that but when they start asking you about the circumstances surrounding that they do have to read you your rights at that time and i think people need to make that like and it's hard you know there are lawyers that don't know that distinction so i mean i'm asking civilians to do it you know your best um, bet is just to keep quiet yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of charges that they can prove beyond reasonable doubt sometimes without your statements to use against you. So if they have, if the cops have all the evidence they need and they don't need your admission, uh, then whether or not they read your Miranda is, is, doesn't help your case. It's not a uh, oops, I forgot kind of thing that gets you out of, out of trouble. And Michelle's exactly right. I mean, I, I have represented attorneys who are like, hey, man, the cops, I got a DUI. The cop didn't read me my, my rights. Um, you don't necessarily need it in every case. So that's not a get out of jail free card. If they if they forget to uh, to read you your rights, you don't. It doesn't undo the arrest. You, you, you the charges still stick. The only difference it makes is whether or not anything you said can be used. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, unless unless the only evidence of your guilt is your is your statements or the best evidence of your guilt is your statements, and they didn't read your rights, then your lawyer you know could go into court file a motion and, um, you know, have the judge agree that that, that violated constitutional rights. And uh, then the evidence gets, your statements get suppressed from the court hearing and the state has to drop the charge. All right. Now I know the answer to this question um, and, and it's one you could probably guess, but uh, if, if this saves anybody from a felony charge, I'm going to go ahead and ask it. Let's say you are smoking a joint and you see a police officer coming and you look at your joint and there's not much of it left and the police officer is maybe far away enough that he can't see it. Should you eat it? <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or dispose of it or, or do something to, to hide it? What, what would happen? What's the difference between what would happen to you if you just stood there holding your joint and if you tried to dispose of it when you saw the police officer coming in? Which circumstance are you better off? Once a possession... Another is possession with tampering. So it just really depends. Hold on. In the hypothetical, James, <laughs> in the hypothetical, uh, I have a little higher risk tolerance. Um, so so in, in this hypothetical, is it a guarantee that, is it, is it assumed that the cop cannot see you do anything with this? Well, let's say you can't tell one way or the other. It's, uh, it, hmm. you, you think there's a chance maybe wrinkle. they didn't see it. That, that, that's a different little wrinkle. I, I will tell you, uh, this is this is not legal advice. Uh, this is uh, just practical, real world. Here's what I would do. Um, I would just drop it. I would just drop it, you know, somewhere uh, nearby or around you. Um, and, you know, there's case law that says mere uh, vicinity to contraband is not proof of guilt. 
and that will help me. Would because you, because if it's in your hand, then I mean, I'm probably gonna get some crap for this. If it's in your hand uh, and the cop pulls up on you, you're getting arrested, right? Um, and if it's on the ground, you might still also get arrested, but at least it's not in your hand. If, and you um, haven't tried to destroy evidence. <laughs> Right. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, it leave the gun, eat the cannoli, is what he's saying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, the point <laughs> I'm trying to make is is destroying evidence or tampering with evidence will get you a felony charge, but just having a joint is not a really big deal legally. So you're much better off to just go ahead and let them uh, get you than than trying to uh, to make your situation worse by by tampering with it. We got time for uh, one last question. James, it's also 2020, so everyone should have a medical card by now. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Um, yes. I just want to add, James, uh, just for a little more clarity, a you know simple possession of like a small joint would be a first degree misdemeanor, which is punishable by up to a year in uh, county jail. Tampering with evidence is a third degree felony punishable by up to five years in prison. So take that into account. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, one last question uh, th that we have time for, and then I'll have to wrap it up. We could do this all night. This is wonderful. Maybe we'll do this again uh, in the future. But uh, let's, so let's say you're being arrested and, uh, and they've got the handcuffs on you and they open up that uh, back seat to the squad car and they're about to put you in there and you look in the back seat and sitting right there on, on the back seat is uh, a bag of weed or a gun or something you're not supposed to be have, not, something you're not supposed to have just sitting there waiting to be blamed on you once you get put in the, uh, in the back seat of the car. What, what, what should you do or not do in that situation? <laughs> well. I mean, I, I think, and, and I could be wrong, and, and there could be differing opinions. I think that you remember everything that when you're getting into a cop car, it's recorded, right? That if you're near it around, it's recorded. I, <clears throat> being the person I am, would absolutely 100% unequivocally say, that is not mine. You will not put that on me. Like, I would be very uh, unequivocal that there is some paraphernalia whatever is in the back of this cart you know whatever you may arrest me for this but you will not arrest me for all of this run other that stuff. ship of prince whatever that is down there like, run, it, like, run I mean, it right now very very unequivocal about that because there is a very high possibility that it is being recorded and even if they would want to charge you with that your your recordings looking at it saying absolutely not that's just me. I mean, y'all may be a little bit more learned than me, so I will take any any um, any uh, other suggestions. I co-sign Michelle. <laughs> that was not a hypothetical question. That happened to somebody that I know. <laughs> All right. So, well, I, I, regrettably, we don't have time anymore for any more questions. One last thing, though, I want to say is if you enjoyed this presentation and you feel uh, inspired to send us a donation to show your appreciation and help us put on presentations like this in the future, we would be grateful to accept it. It's not tax deductible, but it's for a good cause. I just put the link in the chat box. Uh, if you feel that inspiration, this is free, uh, but if you wanted to donate, we, we won't get mad. Uh, but on behalf of the Greater Tampa Chapter of the ACLU of Florida, I wanna thank each and every one of our panelists. They are not being paid. They did this for free because this is important information and they care enough. Uh, to, to volunteer to make sure that this information gets to the people who, who need to hear it. Uh, so thank you to, to all of our panelists from the bottom of our hearts and to the folks who attended and gave us such thoughtful questions. Thank you as well for uh, giving us your time and attention and uh, for making our first ever chapter webinar uh, a, a success. So um, thank you all very much. I, I, I can't thank you enough for uh, agreeing to participate. And uh, I, I think, you know, we'll, we'll try to go ahead and uh, do something like this again in the future. So uh, thank you all so much. And uh, uh, with uh, liberty and justice for all, have a good night. <laughs> good night, Thanks, everyone. Everybody, guys. Good night. Good night.